So in this video, I want to talk specifically about the reasons you believe you can't have an amazing woman in your life. Like, for example, I'm too short, I'm too bald, I'm too ugly, I'm too fat, I have too big of a forehead. Um, whatever the excuse is, I've pre pretty much heard it. You know, throughout the years of me doing this as a business, I've heard every excuse under the sun. I've heard every reason in the last 15 years why a guy can't get a girl. And I'm gonna be honest, in every case, I've run into somebody that is doing it in spite of that condition. For example, I'm too short. I run into get client after client that thinks they're too short and they come to me and they say, there's no, no way I can get girls. Girls don't like guys my height. Those, they might be 5'8", 5'9", 5'7", 5'2", I've heard all the way up to 5'11". Girls only want to date guys over six feet tall. And in every case, that I've met a guy out there that's killing it with women, doing well with women that is really short. I've had many clients that are 5'2". Many clients that are 5'2 that do actually really well with women. When they come in the door in the beginning, they think that their height is a huge impediment. Uh, another big one is fat. I've seen guys come in that say that they're too fat. I've seen other guys come in and they own their chubs, they own their fat, and they, and they, they actually feel kind of like powerful and masculine in their extra weight and in that the way they're seen changes. You see, what you don't understand is that women see you the way you feel about yourself. You could be the most handsome guy in the world, but if you feel like you're a loser and your subcommunication indicates you're a loser, you will get rejected. And they might reject you for the reasons that you think you should be rejected. Like maybe you're subconsciously implying to her you're too short and you're giving her that message over and over again. And for some reason, she gets that idea in her head and she says you're too short. But then a month later, you see her with a guy as shorter, shorter than you. This happens and it happens all the time. Maybe you think you don't make enough money. That's another big one I run into a lot. Guys say all the time they don't make enough money. And the woman's like, yeah, you're not really my type. And then the guy is running around saying, see, she didn't date me because I didn't have enough money. But then the next thing you know, she's dating a guy who's broke and living in a van. I've had several friends that lived in a van that dated women like crazy. And these same women, there would be some women that would actually say, I want a rich guy, but they would make an exception for the guy with no money because he was sexy, he was fun, he was flirty. He gave her everything deep down inside she really wanted. And so as you go deeper and deeper into this principle, you begin to realize that what people are really looking for is to be happy, to have fun. Yes, there are people out there that are truly gold diggers and they're hunting for that money. They're hunting for that something specific. And that's okay because there's plenty that aren't. There's plenty of women that just want to meet an awesome, fun, cool guy. They might say they want to meet a guy that's 5'10 or above, 5'11, 6 feet tall, 6'1, 6 6'3, 6 but they meet that guy that's a little bit shorter or even a lot shorter, and they're like, but he makes me laugh. I like him. He makes me smile. And they go out with him anyways. You see, years ago, I used to be terrible, I mean, to a fault. I was really bad with women. I used to make women run the other direction. And I had every excuse under the sun myself. And what I want to do as we get farther into this video is I want to talk about specifically what I did to change that and how as I look back on that, how I was my own worst enemy and what you can do about that. And before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, share, help us to grow that channel, help us to break the 100,000 mark, and make sure to put a comment in the video. Those comments are really important. Now, the principles that I want to get into now are really, there's something I've been thinking about a lot and I want to dive a little deeper into them. Before I do, I want to share some of my insecurities. I want to share where I came from with all of this. You see, if I go back in time and I think about what it was like early on for me, how I used to make women run the other direction when I was around them, I would have sworn it was because of my looks. I thought I was really ugly. One of the big things that stood out for me is I have a big forehead, and especially when I had short hair. Uh, I had short hair instead of no hair. It really looked big because my hairline's receding back. I had what I used to tease myself and call myself an eight head, and I swore that women would make fun of that. They didn't like that. I remember having that hairline going back. I had kind of long hair and then the hairline going back. I was really nerdy. It was super in my head, analytical. And I remember these guys teasing me and said, dude, you look like just like that actor from Frasier. And I remember thinking he had a huge forehead. I always thought he had a bigger forehead than me. And they said, yeah. And I think they even might have commented on the forehead or I just insinuated they were referring to the forehead. And I took that as a major insult. And it really made me feel ugly. On top of that, 
I thought I was too short. I'm 5'8". I always thought, ah, the girls only want to date guys that are 5'10", 5'11". I didn't have any real muscles to speak of. And I swore that girls really liked muscles or they wanted six-pack abs. That was another one. I didn't have six-pack abs and girls really wanted six-pack abs. I had all these excuses, all these reasons why women wouldn't like me. And I can't, every time a woman even looked at me funny, I would assume it was one of those reasons. It would come up in my subconscious mind. It was really painful, actually. It really uh, hurt. And the truth is that looking back, I never did have a woman reject me for any one of those reasons. They never told me any of those reasons. Those are reasons I projected on myself. I never had a woman reject me for any of those reasons. Those are reasons I projected onto myself. And it sucked and it hurt. And I had to take a really deep inventory of what I was thinking and feeling inside and take a deep look at it. That's why, that's why releasing became so important to me. That's why embodiment became so important to me. You see, I was so in my head analyzing all the reasons I couldn't be good with women. And the main reason I was in my head was because I didn't want to feel all of the pain, all the emotions that were in my body. And as I started to come down and learn to feel my body more, and I started to release and process the emotions, I started to welcome up each and every individual thought. I started to write them all down. I feel like I'm too ugly. Can I welcome that? Can I be with that? I feel like my forehead's too big. I feel like I don't have enough hair. I feel like I don't have enough money. That was another big one. I feel like I'm too short. And I really started to take a deep look at this. The next thing I started to do that was so powerful for me after I had this list was I started to challenge each one, reframe each one. I started to look for somebody that had each one of these conditions, but yet was still really good with women. Like I had a friend, Jason, he could have been my twin brother. He was the same height as me, uh, all, pretty much exactly. He looked a lot like me, but he was a killer with women. He's one of the best I'd ever seen. And when I met him, I thought to myself, this is interesting because Jason, he's got a bald head. He's got the beard, he's my height. And women love to date him. He also doesn't have any money. I didn't have any money. He lives in a van and women still love to date him. And as I started to watch him more and more, I started to feel the pain of that. And that actually reminds me of the story. There was, a, there was one woman once that did tell me I was too short. She was actually one of my best friends. And she one day said to me, it was very interesting. She said, Brian, you know, I could never date you. She just said this out of the blue. And I said, okay, I'll bite. Why? She goes, you're just too short. And I remember hearing that and thinking, what a bitch, because I didn't even ask you on a date. I wasn't even interested in dating you. And she was poking at me. Actually, I think now looking back, she might've been flirting with me. But I remember that sentence specifically because it cut so bad. Well, a few months later, my friend Jason comes over. She meets him for the first time. Could be my twin brother, same height as me. And she is enamored by him. He'd only been there 10, 20, 30 minutes. And I was talking to her and she leans over to me and she goes, I fuck him. And I said, what? She goes, I'd fuck him. And I said to her, wait a minute, he's the same height as me and you said I was too short. And she goes, eh, I'd make an exception. And that's when it really hit me. That's when it really hit hard that women really do respond to how you make them feel, not what you're being. And when I really saw that Jason could surmount so many of these things, matter of fact, they weren't even a thing in his reality. He didn't even think about it. That's when I began to really see things differently. That's when I began to really search out every one of my insecurities and found somebody that was doing better than me. Take Sean Stevenson. You know, I hung out with him at a party once where he was laughing with all these beautiful women that were sitting on his lap because he's three feet tall and in a wheelchair. You know, rest in peace, Sean. Um, I was glad I got to meet you. And uh, he was amazing. He was flirty. He was fun. He was bantery. He ended up marrying a beautiful woman. And when you look at this, when you look at all these people killing it in spite of how they look, how they feel, like you can literally go out and find people that are downright not good looking, that are killing it with women. And then you want to blame your own looks. And what I highly recommend you do is you take each thing on your list that you think isn't good enough and you find that guy that's killing it in spite of it. That matter of fact, that it doesn't even register because I promise you they're out there, whether it's money, whether it's height, whether it's weight, whether it's looks, whether it's bald, whether it's whatever it is. Cause see, your story is your story. Another big one I run into a lot with clients is I'm 
is race. They think because they're Asian or they're some other race uh, like India, and those, those are two common ones I get, that women just wouldn't be attracted to me. But I know so many Asian men, Indian men that are killing it with women. You see, it's just the stereotype. When you don't fit the stereotype, it's actually kind of in your favor. It's kind of sexy. When an Asian man is really grounded and masculine, it's really interesting to some women. He's not fitting the stereotype. That's super fucking sexy. And I promise you, if you look out there, you're going to find plenty of Asian Indian men. And I promise you, if you look, that you can find men of whatever race that are killing it in spite of what you believe. You just have to open your mind. You just have to look. So that's number one. Challenge your beliefs. Find people that are already breaking the paradigm of your beliefs, whatever they are. And number three, and this one's really simple. You see, there's a lot of guys out there that are really good looking. Maybe they have amazing abs, killer muscles, they have that charm, but maybe there's something else missing. The next part that I want you to really look at, this is really important, is I want you to take inventory of the things you can change and improve on. Maybe you can never change your height. Maybe you're always gonna be 5'2", five 5'1", five five feet tall, who knows? Uh, maybe you're always gonna be bald like me. Maybe you don't want to lose weight. I have a friend that's a chef. He's 5'2". He's a chef. And he's like, I'm never losing my weight. Who trusts a skinny chef? But he kills it with women. Matter of fact, he ended up marrying a beautiful woman much taller than him. So what I want you to do is take inventory of what you can change and you're willing to change and go out and change it, starting with your beliefs and challenging those. But then the next thing is, do you want to get into shape? If you can get into really good shape, do it. Have fun with it. If you can um, develop a really smooth voice that's super sexy, that's actually going to be more powerful than looks sometimes. Do it. If you can really work on your eye contact and your embodiment, learn to feel your heart, learn to feel your turn on, do it. If you can learn to speak with sexual innuendo and turn on and playfulness, do it. There's so many other qualities you can develop that are so attractive besides money, besides height, besides uh, having six-pack abs, qualities of beingness that can really change your reality with women. And I highly recommend that you go work on those. Matter of fact, I believe those will have a greater impact than some of the other stuff that you think is so important. If you want to learn more about those qualities, definitely check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. We'll put a link in here somewhere. It's a powerful book that can really help you transform your reality in this area. It's all about the way you're being and your subcommunication. So definitely check that out. So again, I want to invite you into this idea that the most powerful qualities you can develop are ways of being, and anybody can develop those. So definitely start to take a look at those. You can find those all through my videos. And so now you've got a plan to attack your insecurities, to go after them, to really make a change. And if you really enjoying this and you really think it's awesome, definitely check out my last video, or I think it's two videos ago, my video on rejection. We'll put a link in here somewhere and learn more about what it is to be powerful in the face of rejection and what rejection really means. And this could also help you to understand why you might be self-rejecting and blaming something like your height or your looks when in reality it might be something else altogether. Now, hopefully you're getting a lot out of this video and hopefully you'll actually go and apply it. And if you're gonna apply it, apply it right away. Put these techniques right to work. Don't walk around feeling bad about who you are as a man. Everybody's got something that holds them back. And the truth is, is we've all got things that are pluses and things that are minuses, but we've got a ton of stuff we can develop that uh, are ways of being that can really give us an edge over everybody else if you're willing to put a little bit of time in. Now, with that said, I want to also invite you to check out uh, thefearlessman.com and the events page and check out our events. We have a flagship workshop called The Experience that helps you to work directly on these beingness qualities. And uh, they're so powerful that just one workshop can have a huge shift in your life. You get to see how you're being on camera. You get to work directly with beautiful models. You get direct field experience and you get direct coaching experience. So if you're interested in something like that, check out thefearlessman.com. Check out the events page. And with that said, hopefully you like this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to that bell notification, make sure to share. 
make sure to comment in the video. We definitely want those comments. And as always, remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.